Welcome back. I hope the previous example was useful. So here is a second example with a very specific channel. This is our same two by two channel as before, BPSK, high SNR, and we pick a certain epsilon here. Now in MATLAB, you can do this SVD by just by using the SVD command and make sure that you provide three outputs. And I put S instead of Sigma because in MATLAB, it's easier to write like this. And then you will get this result, right? So this is the two by two unitary matrix U, a two by two unitary matrix V, and then the matrix of singular values. And you see here, if you plot these singular values, there's only two of them, one, two, and then sigma I, I, I. First value is three, 0.16, and the second value is very, very small. So 3.17, 0 0.003. Because you have one large singular value, one very small singular value. Now your task is to verify that U and V are unitary, how you would design a MIMO communication system. Um, and then an example which relates to, to somehow the previous example I talked about, what would be the SVD of a geometric line of sight MIMO channel? Okay, so this is a channel where you have H is some complex number, you can pick whatever you want. And then this response vector a theta a phi transposed where a of theta is just one exponential j pi sine theta right if you plug this in you will find that sigma will be zero 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 and then some number and this number should relate to alpha and the number of antennas that you use Good, so please pause the video and then come back. Okay, so in MATLAB, you can easily verify that when you compute U Hermitian U, so U Hermitian in MATLAB is this prime symbol, V Hermitian V, that this gives identity matrix matrices. Now we note that there's only one singular value that is large, so it makes sense to only send one stream. How we do that is we don't need to generate the full V matrix, but we just take the first column of V and U. And then we have our data symbol. So this is just a complex number. V is a two by one vector. So this pre-coded symbol will be a two by one vector. This is what we send over the channel. Okay, so then the receiver obtains Y times H times the pre-coded signal plus noise. Okay, there should be also the imaginary part of the noise, but let's forget about that. And then we do the shaping at the receiver. Okay, so then we take this observation, which is two by one. We multiply this by a one by two vector now, and then we get a one by one, a scalar. Okay, so then we get y tilde is some constant, sigma one one. Okay, and this will actually be 3.17. 3.17 times x tilde plus some noise. What do you call it? W. Okay, and this is these are just scalars. And you can easily verify that this holds true where the noise is very as distributed as before. Now you could sense you could use the full pre-coding and combining matrix, right? So this would be on the first stream. And then on the second stream you get 0 0.003 x tilde 2 plus w2 but of course the second link snr is so low that maybe it's not worth to transmit anything here is a more complicated version of this problem and i will also provide some matlab code for this 10 transmit and 10 receive antennas we will use nine streams so we can use up to 10 streams in principle depending on the rank of the channel uh, we would need to make sure the number of streams is less than the number of transmit and receive antennas. This will be our noise variance. We generate a channel, a really fading channel, compute the SVD. At the transmitter, we take our uh, data symbols. So here, these are QPSK symbols. We have our pre-coding matrix, and we don't need to use the full pre-coding matrix, only depending on how num many number of streams we have. Okay, so you could change this to one or to two, however you want. Then this x tilde here will be ns by 1. 
After multiplying with our pre-coding matrix, we obtain a stream of mt by 1. So we always use all the transmit antennas. At the receiver side, we have a mr by 1 observation, which is the transmitted pre-coded signal time to channel matrix plus noise. We then apply shaping to get again our ns by 1 observation. This is our y tilde. And now you will see that y tilde i is equal to sigma i i times x tilde i plus some noise. We we'll call it w i. i from 1 to n s. Okay. And then here, of course, we can do stream by stream detection. So you will recover an estimate, an estimate of x tilde i from maximum likelihood detection with low complexity. Um, yeah, now because we've created this uh, parallel streams of data, we've created these NS parallel streams, it becomes very easy to do water filling with this, so um, deterministic water filling. So this means that you choose how much power you give to each stream, which constellation you use for each stream in order to maximize the rate. Maximizes the rate. And I leave it up to you to try to understand this connection to more detail. So um, we've already seen that we can choose how many streams that we send and probably we don't want to use uh, streams corresponding to very low singular values and the extreme case of using only one singular value which means that we sent one stream using all the antennas and we again combine at receiver using all the antennas this just takes the first column of v and the first column of uh, u at the receiver side and then you obtain this observation model Okay, so the observation y is u Hermitian h v x plus noise. And let's look at what this means. So y is u Hermitian h v x plus noise is equal to u Hermitian. And recall what is um, h. h is u sigma v Hermitian v x plus noise. And now this U we have here is the first column of this matrix here. Okay. So this means that when I multiply these, I will get a, a row vector that looks as 1, and then 0, 0, 0, as many as there are um, receive antennas. It looks like this, right? Because when I multiply the first column of U with U, I get a 1. Okay, sorry, when I reply the first column of U with the first column in here, I get 1, and then all the other columns are uh, orthogonal, so I get 0. Then I have my sigma matrix, so sigma 1, 1, till sigma r, r, let's say. On the receiver side, I have the same thing. I have 1, 0, 0, 0, times x plus noise. Okay, so this thing is equal to this one and then v Hermitian v is equal to this one and this is because u and v are the first the small u and v are the first columns of the big u and v okay. and then we obtain that this is equal to sigma 1 1 x plus noise so we've only used the largest singular value in our system to communicate and now, this is really what we've seen in the diversity lecture, right? We want to send x over our channel. We do coherent combining. This is maximum ratio combining that we're doing here. Split over the transmitter and the receiver. And this is a way if you want to have very high reliability, so this you would use in very low SNR and still get your data through. Okay, so... 
we choose u and v along the largest singular value and this leads to high diversity but low rate this means that you will have highest possible SNR for your channel. Good, then we have one more topic left, which is the capacity of the MIMO channel. So before, I guess in the previous course, you've seen the capacity of the additive white Gaussian noise channel, which says that the capacity is equal to log 2, 1 plus SNR times the bandwidth, right, expressed in bits per second. Um, when you have a wireless channel, then the capacity will be log to, well, I should actually say what this means, this would be the ES over N0, 1 plus the channel squared times ES over N0 times the bandwidth. Okay, so nothing really changes, it just the, the, the received power depends on the channel that you have between the transmit and the receiver. And now this capacity, um, this is for a given channel, so given channel. If the channel is random, then there are two no notions of capacity, one is ergodic capacity, And the other one is outage capacity. But I will not cover these uh, in this lecture. But I, I suppose that this capacity is very intuitive. It's just 1 plus the signal-to-noise ratio seen at the receiver times the bandwidth here. So it's exactly the same as the additive white Gaussian noise capacity, just with a different signal-to-noise ratio. So if you are okay now with this expression here, then we go back to our MIMO case. So the first line here is our model from before. The observation, we have the power constraint. So before we had that expectation x squared is equal to rho. So now we generalize this a little bit. Um, so this is still true, but we, we allow for arbitrary transmit signal covariance with trace equal to rho, so that means that the power that we transmit is equal to rho, and then the noise is uh, IID with variance one. The channel has a certain singular value decomposition, u sigma v, where sigma contains these singular values on, on, along the diagonal, in case, which case these are RH singular values and the rest is zeros. Now for this channel, you can compute the capacity just as you did in this example here. But now because the channel uh, H is a matrix, the expression is a little bit more complicated. So the capacity is the bandwidth times log 2 of 1 plus SNR, but instead of 1 plus SNR, now we have a determinant of an identity matrix H times Rx times H Hermitian. And it is easy to verify that when we have one transmit and one receive antenna, we find exactly this expression here. And this expression is without proof. Um, in addition, we need to maximize over all possible transmit covariances. Well, this will give us our capacity. If we don't do this maximization, we have a constrained capacity for a certain transmit covariance. So this first expression you can accept without proof. Now given this, uh, we have two cases, one with no CSIT and one with CSIT. If you do not know what is the trans, if you don't know what is the channel at the transmitter, then the only thing you could do in terms of the transmit covariance is to split the power over all antennas. Okay, so this is what this means. Split power equally over all transmit antennas. Yeah, because you don't know anything about the channel, there's nothing preferential about any antenna versus another. So this is what you would use. Now, when you plug this into this expression, plus you compute the singular value decomposition of H, you will find this here. 
And this is a good um, exercise to do yourself, to go from this capacity to this capacity when Rx is rho over mt times an identity matrix using the singular value decomposition of H. So we see that we have a sum over all the streams and each stream has its own SNR. Right? So the transmit power, which you divide over the number of transmit antennas, times the singular value squared of that stream. On the other hand, when the channel is known at the transmitter, you don't need to do this. You, don't, you shouldn't split the power equally among all the transmit antennas. What you would do is you would do water filling over the parallel channels. Right? Because the transmitter knows what is the SNR of each of the channels, it can put more power in the good channels and less power in the bad channels using water filling. And then the capacity expression will be given by this. It's again a sum over all of the streams. But for each stream, you will allocate now a certain amount of the SNR or a certain amount of transmit power. And of course, the sum of these transmit power should satisfy the total transmit power constraint. But it is up to you how to assign these transmit powers. And if you look at the structure of this problem, this is exactly the water filling problem that we've seen a few lectures ago. And this expression here for the capacity will always be larger than the expression for the capacity here. In the worst case, it is equal. Now, to, approach, to achieve this capacity, you need to code. Of course, you need to find long block codes over time that, that code across time and across the antennas. And as I mentioned before, when the channel is random, you will have different notions of capacity, of average capacity and outage capacity, which will be covered in the capacity lectures. But here we focus on the capacity for a given channel matrix H. And these two expressions will be used in the next lecture. Good. With this, we end. Um, so you've seen SISO, SIMO, MISO, and MIMO transmission. We've seen the geometric and really fading narrowband model. We briefly also talked about the wideband model. You should be able to use different detectors over the BIMO channel when the receiver knows the channel. When the transmitter knows the channel, you should be able to perform parallel decomposition using singular value decomposition and then combine this with uh, water filling. And you should also perform beam forming when you have, want to have the maximum reliability of your MIMO link, but using low rate transmission.